Alright, so it's been a while since I've made a video, <laughs> but, you know, I have a job and stuff, so uh, it's tough for me to find the energy to make videos all the time. Anyways, what I'm going to be talking about today is an interesting topic. You know, I got to thinking about the isometric RPG, and I was like, there's got to be a better way to do some of the things that I want to do with this. So I really started digging deep into LibGX and how people do things and stuff for like inventory systems and you know pathfinding all these things and played me a little bit of Diablo and I decided I wanted to do something cooler with it than what I was doing in my past video series and something a little more sophisticated and just better. Uh, so I've been working on some stuff slowly but surely. I'm going to talk about some pathfinding today. I'll also show you what I've been working on. And eventually, I'm going to start from scratch with the isometric RPG tutorial series, and we're going to do it right, I hope. And uh, we're going to make sort of like an you know action RPG, kind of like Diablo or something. I'm hoping, anyways. And uh, we're going to we're going to do some cool stuff with it. So, anyways, if you've used like GDX long enough, eventually you will run into uh, GDX AI, or at least if you make a complicated enough game you'll run into it eventually and <clears throat> the GDX AI uh, documentation to me isn't good actually I find like none of LibGDX's documentation to be really good but you know it's what we have to work with anyways they tell you about a bunch of stuff here so what do you need to be able to use pathfinding now I'll admit in this video I'm not going to go into like the theory of pathfinding or all the technical math stuff. I'm just going to show you the library and how I implemented it because this video isn't really meant to be an in-depth guide. It's just sort of me talking about it a little bit and maybe somebody will get something out of it. In any case, uh, you have this GDX AI pathfinding thing and this is built into the libgdx sort of framework to help you do things like pathfinding and if you if you want to read something about the a star algorithm that it implements and you want to read a little bit, of, bit more about pathfinding theoretically and the math behind it and stuff i suggest you come here to the pathfinding api documentation you read a little bit about it but the short of it is you have this graph path um, because your character is going to have to traverse through some type of graph. Whenever you have a map that your character is walking on, the, in order for your character to find a path through there, you're going to have to have some sort of graph or, or structure, data structure, uh, that represents the map, right? Uh, it could range from very simple to very complex, but essentially LibGX's uh, AI library here has this like graph path class for you that you can implement uh, that will represent your map essentially and the points the player can move to. It, this will make more sense when I show you in a moment. The heuristic is simply, you know, how you calculate. I mean, it, it tells you here, right? It estimates the cost to move from one node to other, the distance per se, or whatever you would want the cost to be. So if you have to move from point A to point B, it's going to use this heuristic to say like, okay, this node should go first because that's the closest one to my end goal than the next node and it'll avoid nodes which uh, are denoted as blocked or that it doesn't have if there's a wall or something obviously it doesn't have those nodes so it's gonna have to choose nodes that go around that area where it doesn't have connections which you'll see in a moment so like I said if you want to read some in-depth stuff come here to the GDX AI uh, documentation and that'll give you a good start but I found this documentation to be kind of uh, unhelpful. I usually do a little bit better if I just get in and experiment myself. So let's look at the project here. I, I For simplicity, to help you all out, and for my own sake, I did everything in one class. I just called it a pathfinding system. And we're going to go through this class today. I already wrote out all the code. It's just in one class. And uh, I'm going to show it all to you today. To save time, I'm not going to write it out again. Uh, you see I have my distance heuristic here, which is a class libgdx already has. Same thing with the graph. Uh, I'm, I end up implementing these classes, but I, I don't actually... These aren't classes that I've made up. There's something that exists uh, 
in libd xcc graph path here, you see heuristic, that kind of stuff. So well actually this graph one might have been something I made up, but it's gonna it's gonna like extend or implement one of these things up here as you'll see in a moment. So let's check out what I've done. I'll show you a couple of things. Now <laughs> I'm not gonna say it's beautiful, but you can see we have this little isometric map here, this little isometric slime. Now I bet you're wondering, hmm, why do the tiles here well this one's kind of big. This is actually his current hitbox. Uh, I'll do another video about drawing lines, like debugging, things like that. Uh, however, and, and how to do that easily in libgdx, because libgdx has this thing called a shape renderer. Uh, and there's a couple other libraries that you can use that, that allow you to do debug hitboxes and stuff like really easily. In any case, let's zoom in a little bit here. So what is going on with this? What have I got here? Well, actually, these little dots, squares, don't represent uh, tiles. They actually represent my graph. So these are points the player can move to. Right now, the player is only configured for four-way movement. So this way, this way, you know, this way, and this way. You could configure him for eight-way movement, so that he could also move along these path, this path, and this way, and this way, so on and so forth. It depends on what you want out of your isometric game. Obviously, if you want to make a game like Diablo or something, you're going to have to have eight-way movement. It's just, you know, eight-way movement's pretty rough as far as art goes, so for now I've done four-way movement, just for this example. But you can see my player's position is also represented by one of these little dots. Now, if I move my player, you can see he finds his way up to that dot just fine, and you can see his little position dot moving. That's actually the position of his texture, because you know it's calculated from the bottom left, but I found that's the most convenient way to represent the player's uh, actual position, right? Because he's, he's drawn to the screen by his texture or his, you know, sprite or whatever, and therefore his true position is where he's drawn to the screen from, which is the bottom left of his texture or, like I said, sprite or whatever, which is actually about right here, but I'm drawing this isometric box. So his true position is like right about here, but this is the isometric box that I'm getting to roughly represent his position. Now this, if you've watched my other videos, this shouldn't be like a super foreign concept to you. You know, isometric rendering in 2D is a little bit different, but you can see if I choose like a place like that, it's going to choose what it thinks is the shortest path to that. Like I said, I'm not saying it's beautiful, but... And you can see he kind of finds his way around to these dots. You can go up here. You can see the rendering's working. It just looks like they're kissing now, actually, which is kind of weird. But, uh, and you can see his little box that represents his position moving. I just made it the same size as the other ones for the sake of uh, clarity. And yeah, so he just kind of finds his way around, right? He's just like moving and stuff. It's pretty cool. Anyways, pathfinding in an isometric world, right? And this will be handled for you by this pathfinding system that libgdx has built for you. I've also got some other cool stuff in here I've been working on. You got this little inventory screen where I'm dragging around, where I can, whoops, it, it, it's not, it's not precise yet, but in any case, just drag around this item. I envisioned this to be maybe like, you know, head, leg, armor slots, stuff like that, so. And I got these little fake stats over here just drawn to the screen, but in any case, cool. So, that's that. And, uh, you know, of course, I don't have to zoom in to make it move. We can we can watch it move from up here. So, cool. And like I said, because he's four-way movement only right now, he uh, does this weird zigzaggy movement. But like I said, you, you could make him eight-way movement. I just have it for art reasons, and I thought it would be a little bit more clear if he actually switched the way he was facing when he moved. Uh, oh, you can see I'm printing out some information down here, but that's not really important. Cool. Uh, also, sorry if this is a little bit small. I think when I zoomed in, though, it was pretty clear what was going on, right? So, and it finds the shortest path, what it thinks is the shortest path there. Cool. So, how do you do this? 
it, it looks like magic, right? It's really not. So basically, there's a few things you need, right? You're going to have to generate all of the, you're going to have to make all of the things that GDX AI's algorithm needs in order to find a path. Now, what is that? Now, you can see down here, I've got this really BS way of doing things right now. Just, you know, please ignore this. This is nonsense. Uh, I'm going to have to change this at some point. I, what this is, is it's like, I just did this for the video because it was the quickest way to do it. What this is essentially is I'm saying like, okay, when my mouse clicks here, get me the nearest point that's within no more than like eight pixels. So uh, this is a BS algorithm, but it's the quickest way I can do it. So it gave me that point because that was the nearest point or whatever, right? In any case, so ignore this part. This is what we want to look at. So you have this indexed A star pathfinder class that libgdx gives you, and you need to have all of the things this path, this class wants in order for it to generate a path for you. So you make a new graph path. This is a libgdx thing, uh, and it takes a node. We'll talk about that in a moment. Or it, it's going to be a set of nodes, which will be in this graph path. This graph path, by the way, is essentially going to be a list a list of nodes. It's just, you know, it's called a graph path. Uh, and like I said, this is something that, this is not a class I made. This is a class that exists in libgdx. So you could actually look at the documentation for this class if you wanted to. But you have to have uh, the graph path uh, implemented, essentially, or, or, well, not implemented, but you have to have a graph path because the index A star is going to take it. Um, here, as you can see, it, this is just, you're telling it it's going to be a graph. In any case, but back to my point. So you need a start node. So this is where your player or enemy or whatever is starting. In my case, I've said like, okay, this is the position they're starting at. So this start node would be this node right here. And then the end node would be like this node right here. So you need a target node. I've just noted it with a position. And then, I'm like I said, this is kind of brute force. This is not an elegant way of doing it. But I've just said, like, OK, the node whose position matches these positions cl most closely, go ahead and give me that node for the start and that node for the end. Uh, we we'll, we'll sort out some more elegant way of doing this later, probably. But you need a start node, you need an end node, you need a distance heuristic, which, like I said, is a way to calculate distance between nodes, which I'll show you my implementation of that in a minute. It's really simple. Uh, and you need a new graph path. And what's happening here is when you put this path in, you know, when you pass an object in Java, that object is able to change inside the method. You're essentially passing it by reference. In any case, it's going to populate this path for you inside of this, you know, method search node path. This is like basically an anonymous class. Like I'm just saying new. I'm not actually making an instance of index day star pathfinder. I'm just like, okay, just give me a path, right? Without me having to make an instance of it. So just new index day star pathfinder, give me a path. Cause all I really want is this, right? Anyways. Cool, and then return the path. So this is just my method to get a path once I once I need one, given a start position and end position. Now let's implement some of these things we need. So we know we need to implement nodes. We need a distance heuristic implemented. And we already have the path here, but we, we are going to have to do some uh, some graph stuff. So Because uh, you can see that this is the graph up here. And this is something I actually built myself, this graph. Uh, but it's based off of default graph path. So it's not actually something I did, but kind of is. Anyway, so you're entering your graph here, and you're going to say that's the graph, and give me a path out of that graph, given a start position, an end position, and a distance heuristic. That's what you're saying here. So indexed A star pathfinder, find me a path from this graph, this map, whatever you're going to call it might be more semantic to call it a map because you're working with a map, right? 
from this start position to this end position with this distance you're risking. So let's get around to uh, implementing a thing. You can ignore this. This is, I'm getting all the graph nodes so that I can uh, draw them to the screen to be able to debug them. A little slime here. Maybe we'll make a game where we play as a slime. I don't know. That could be fun. Uh, okay, so here's my graph that I made. Very simple. This is so simple. So this is all you need for the graph. Basically, you're going to implement index graph. And this is the graph we have up here, obviously. Now, I did all of this as inner classes. So I have this class inside of my pathfinding system class. And the reason why I did that is because I just thought it was easier. This class is never going to be needed outside of this class, really. So why not just have it as an inner class? You have everything all in one place. You don't have like five different files for distance heuristic, for graph. They're all in one file. It's really easy. I found it click for my sake, for my sanity. I found it best to just keep them all in one file. But basically, we have an array of nodes. Now, what is this capital A array? This is not an array like, you know, uh, this is not this type of array. You know what I mean? This is not like a regular Java array. This is a libgdx built list that you can use. Supposedly, it has some benefits, but it's essentially the same thing as saying that this is a list, right? So it, it's a it's a list that libgdx is built for you to be more efficient for game development. I can't speak to that. It might be. I don't know. In any case, cool. So it needs to hold an array of nodes because this is our graph, right? So our graph is going to hold all the nodes that make up the graph or the map, whatever. And you're telling it nodes because this is what we're going to get to this class in a minute. I just called the class node. You could call the class position. You could call the class, you know, uh, whatever you want. You can see it down here. Basically, you're going to have to be able to, uh, you know, you have a public constructor here that essentially takes an array of nodes and says, like, okay, this is the nodes for this graph. Um, you also have, you can get the index of a node, and you'll see that we'll implement this node index thing below. Um, this is something you have to implement, I believe, for libgdx sake. Anything with override, we implemented because libgdx's algorithm, a star algorithm, wants it, right? So we went ahead and implemented this, even though it seems quite simple. It just takes a node and it returns node.index, right? Uh, but that's the way it is. Get node count, nodes.size, you're just returning the number of nodes. That seems really simple. Uh, okay, you have an array here of node connections. We'll talk about this connection class in just a moment, but it's basically just a connection from one node to another. Really simple. Uh, and we're gonna, I'll show you in a minute where I've defined my connections. And basically, you're gonna get the connect, it's taking a node and it's getting all of the connections that node has. So it, in this case, this node has two connections right now. It has a connection to this node and it has a connection to this node, right? So it would return an array of connection that uh, has t that of size two, because there's two connections, right? Um, sorry if I'm not explaining that well, but I think it's fine. And I also made a method here. I don't think this one's an override. Maybe I forgot to add the override, but I think I made this one as a convenient class for myself. Let me make sure, yeah. This one I made as a convenient class for myself because I use it somewhere else in the project and I'm just getting all of the nodes. This is the great thing about like implementing this is you can you can override the methods, but you can also add your own convenience methods, which is kind of nice. I, I think this class is simple and understandable once you understand the nodes, which like I said, just represent positions. This is your node, right? All of these are nodes. So or positions, whatever you're called. And this graph just has simple methods to do things with those nodes. Now, the distance heuristic. Oh boy, even more complicated, am I right? So basically, my nodes, which we'll see in a moment, have a position, and we're just calculating the distance between 
This is a vector 2, by the way, which has a method to get a distance between and another vector 2. So basically, my distance heuristic, which is essentially a calculation of cost between two nodes, is just the distance between the nodes. So when the algorithm says, okay, what's the, what's the heuristic for this, or what's the uh, cost of going from this node to this node, it's going to calculate the distance between them. And it's going to say, like, okay, well, you know, this one is this distance, and then it's like this distance to the final node or something, right? And it's going to be, like I said, four-way movement looks a little bit funny with pathfinding, but anyways, it's, it's going to get the distance, right? It's going to say like, well, this node is closer than this one to the final, or whatever. The point is, is your distance heuristic is a distance from one position to the next. It's really all we have to think about. It takes a node and it takes an end node. So it just takes two nodes. And you don't even have to worry about using this method. What's going to use this method is this, right? And we don't we don't care about the implementation of this, right? All we're worried about is satisfying what it wants. You could go in here and you could look at how the algorithm is performed if you really wanted to, just control click on it. But why, right? I don't care what it does with these things once I, once I put it in. I just want it to give me a path. So that's kind of the way it is. But your distance heuristic just has to be some measurement of cost from one node to another. It doesn't matter if it, it, it doesn't matter if the nodes are beside each other. Just one node to any other node. And in my case, it's the distance between them, uh, their positions. So if this one is at position zero, zero, and this one is at position, I don't know, zero, 20 or something, or, or if you're doing tile position, it could be zero, zero, and zero, one, whatever, you figure, you, you, you do what you like. You could do tile position, you could do, uh, you know, to world position. I think I'm doing world position here, but let's look at the node class. So this is where it kind of, the magic happens. So we have an array of connections. These are the nodes that it's connected to. Um, I also have a polygon, which represents its isometric uh, box that we're drawing to the screen here. Now, I just, this seems straightforward. I just built an isometric box from its position, so its world position. And I basically said I want the box to be four pixels. Well, it's actually eight pixels wide and, and four pixels tall, but I want the box to be eight pixels wide and four pixels tall. So that's what this is. It's eight pixels wide, four pixels tall, twice as wide as it is tall, which is typical in isometric rendering. Cool. That's it. That's and you know what? You can do uh, lots of other cool stuff in LibGDX with these polygons, too. Uh, it's a great way to make colliders, stuff like that. And basically, the, this other stuff is like really straightforward. You, you have an index. This is something used by LibGDX. Like here, you can get the index of the node. But you don't have to do much with it yourself in implementation. Basically, you just have to have an index. And then we have a we have a tile position and a world position, which I thought was kind of useful, even though my world position is what I use to estimate the cost between nodes. You have what it, the nodes it's connected to, and we'll look at this. We'll look at this node connection class uh, in just a minute, and that's it. That's the whole note. This is, it has a position and it has its hitbox. You don't even have to have this if you don't want. It has its connections, it has an index. You don't need the tile position if you don't want. That's really, that's it. I hope this is straightforward because it really, there's there's just not much here. You just, like I said, you're just satisfying what LibGDX wants you to satisfy in order to get, a, get it to spit out a path for you. I mean, sometimes that's the way it's got to work, right? You just got to find uh, a library, you just got to use it. It's like not everything. If you were to implement A star yourself or something, I'm sure it would be it would be complicated. But we live in a world where you just don't have to. Um, this is like good enough, right? So cool. Now node connection, the last class we have to look at here. And like I said, these are all just inner classes. You public class, public class, all inside of this main pathfinding system here. You can call this whatever you want. Call it pathfinding system. I'm trying out some new 
some new architecture here, some a little bit more complex, sophisticated architecture here. Now, what is a connection? Well, all it is is the node you're going from, the node you're going to. So you would have a node connection where this is the from node and this is the to node, right? And you would have a node connection where this is the from node and this is the to node. So seems pretty straightforward, right? And in an eight-way movement thing, you would have a connection here too. You also have a connection here. You wouldn't have a connection here because no node exists, right? Anyways, cool. So, and if you, you know, in an eight-way system, one of these middle nodes would have a bunch of connections, right? This would be the from, it would have a node connection for the from to, from to, from to, so you could, you could really get up there with node connections, but that's all this is. Now, get from node, get to node, that's straight up. Now, what does this get cost? Well, I, I gotta be honest, I'm, I don't think the algorithm uses this. I, I think you have to be doing something like incredibly specific with the pathfinding for this to be used because I've found that this value doesn't change anything for me. So maybe y'all can do a little bit more research into the get cost thing. I never use this, but maybe y'all will use it for something. So, you know, have at it. But this is all you need. Now, once you have these things, how do you make the connections, right? Well, what I did is I said, I went ahead and built the nodes first. So you might remember this math. This is the same math we used to build the isometric map in my other video, in my other videos. And basically I used it to find out where my nodes were gonna be for the isometric movement. You don't have to do it this way, but it's the way I did it. And then at the end of it, we get a huge, so our, at the end of it, basically we get this array of nodes, which is going to represent which is going to go into our graph and represent, because you can see I, I make the graph new and, you know, I, I give it these nodes. So basically we're going to be saying like, okay, well, this array of nodes is going to be represented by this sort of array that I, uh, that I built here. And what this does is if you remember, this essentially, you know, loops through in a manner, okay, let's just look at the map real quick. It loops through in a manner, it's gonna build it, right? It's gonna do this, and the, so the math, the math is gonna build this for you, right? It's gonna, it's gonna give you the position here, you just make that into a node, then it's gonna give you the position here, you make that into a node, so on and so forth, down each column and each row until you get to the end, right? Just like we did in the other videos, not a big deal. In any case, all we're doing is setting the world position, which as you'll remember is calculated like this, and the tile position, which as you'll remember is just this, and then the count. Now, what does this count? Well, it's its index, essentially, as far as I remember. Is that correct? That is correct. So basically it's its index in the map. Indexing the array, I should say, pretty straightforward. So the first one's gonna be zero, one, two, all the way up to you know, however many you define, which I just have this constant, which is right now it's 80 by 80. It's a pretty big map um, in any case. But yeah, really simple, right? You have all your nodes. So how do you make the connections? Well, in my case, I kind of, I mean, I brute forced it, which I think is fine because this code runs, doesn't run when the game is running. This runs before the game ever starts. So I was like, well, if it's a little bit inefficient, I mean, it, it runs at load time, not at run time, right? So it's like the player is never going to notice a slowdown because this code will be done before the player ever starts playing, right? But basically, I went through each node and I said, okay, go through each node and make the connections, right? So let's look at the map again. I said, you know, if the node... So remember, we have a node and we're going to go through each node. If the node is tile position plus one, here let me move the player away. Really. Tile position plus one, but the same y position, x position plus one, uh, but the same y position, so it just you know it equals it. <clears throat> the tile position of the current node that you have 
if this, so that means it would be, if, it, if we're starting at this one, it would be this node here. Let's go ahead and add a connection because we should, right? There should be a connection here. And all, the way you do that is you just take this node and you say, okay, the node that I'm currently on, which is just, um, you know, I, go ahead and make a connection from this node. Okay, yes, move all the way over there. Yep, okay, it's moving too far now. Okay, <laughs> I, I, cl I clicked somewhere way over here when I, when I clicked it back on the screen. Anyways, cool. So go ahead and make a connection. I, th this this seems intuitive, right? This seems pretty straightforward. Make a new node connection and add it to this node's connections that goes from here to here, right? And then do it for each of the four. So if it's like here, do it for here, 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 and here. If it were eight way, which you could do, and I did do for a little while, this method gets kind of like, wait. Oh, I screwed, I messed it up, my bad. Got to, aha. Now, theoretically, we're doubling our, <laughs> you see it took a little while to load there because we're doubling, but you see now, he can move in eight directions, right? Pretty cool, huh? So the, the movement becomes a lot sm smoother now. The movement's a lot smoother. Um, So, I think that's pretty cool. And you know, maybe maybe that's closer to reality. It looks like the path he's choosing is a little bit weird. We might have to smooth that out later. Uh, but in any case, I think this code's pretty straightforward. Like I said, you're just getting all of the tile positions around the current node. So x plus one, y is the same, uh, you know, x minus one, y is the same, y plus one, x is the same. Doing that for every single possible position, right? So, and uh, we're just gonna go back to commenting that out for now because I wanna test the four-way movement for the moment. But uh, that's it. And then this node, like we looked at before, is going to hold a connection, one of these node cons, from itself to the other node. And that's it. You've, it's done. Like you have, you have your nodes for the graph. All of the nodes have the nodes they're connected to. Their connections are filled. The connections are uh, is filled for every node. You have your graph with the nodes that have connections. And then we've satisfied libgdx's uh, A star algorithm. All you need at that point is to make your own algorithm for finding your start and end, end node. And that's it. Your distance heuristic is done and it's really simple. You have your start and end node and that start and end node, all ha they have connections and their connections have connections. I think if anything's like a sticking point, maybe this node connection thing is, but I find it to be pretty simple. Essentially, libgdx's array is going to use these node connections. I mean, libgdx's algorithm is going to use these node connections to figure out the path. I, I think that's really the best explanation I can give. The Once you have the path, all you need to do is is move your player through it, right? So the way I did this is I just said like, you know, just kind of loop through the path, get one position, then get the next position and just move towards them, right? And that's really it. I, If something in this video was like totally convoluted, let me know. Uh, if the text was too small, let me know. I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I zoomed in quite a bit, but you know, do one kind of final pan over of the whole thing. You know, if anybody really wants this file, I can probably upload it. And you know what? If you think you can do it better than me, 
if you've learned enough from this to say like, you know, hey, that gives me an idea. I think that, I think I can actually do this even better. You know, go for it. This is just my first attempt at it. And I think there definitely probably are a few better ways to do it. Anyways, I'm thinking next time we're going to talk about like these sort of debug hitboxes and stuff. But also I'm going to get thinking about, you know, things like this inventory system. How to best do this. Cause it's looking pretty good now. But I need things like tooltips. I need things like being able to use it right. I just did like a half screen thing here because I was like, that's kind of how Diablo does it, right? It's like it does like a half screen. So Yeah, anyways, tell me what you think. Even if this isn't to your liking, I think I've given people enough here to where they can get started with, with GTX's pathfinding. I, I think that I kind of wish it was explained to me this way. I kind of wish I had seen it laid out in such a clear manner. A lot of these tutorials I found online are the stuff on Stack Overflow and stuff like that. I felt like didn't really give you a clear picture of everything you needed. And I think they were too mathy and not really enough practical. I hope this has given you at least a practical start to pathfinding in libgdx. And next time we'll do some other cool stuff. So uh, see you later.